Welcome, cosmic listeners, to a journey unlike any other you've embarked upon. As the vastness of space stretches out before us, so too does the vastness of our own minds. This is where the ethereal meets the extraterrestrial, where inner space meets outer space. I'm your guide, alongside my hosts, Doro and Matt, and you're tuning into the intersection of meditation and mysteries beyond our stars. Picture this, a vast universe, ever-expanding, filled with stars, galaxies, and possibilities. Now visualize our own minds equally deep, intricate, and filled with untapped potential. What if these two worlds aren't as separate as they seem? All right. Thank you for that intro, uh, our alien AI avatar. This is meditation and aliens with doro and matt i'm matt i'm the founder of hive1.net and i'm here with doro kylie creationcoach.com doro is a life coach and meditation teacher extraordinaire hi doro hey matt it's good to be back thanks for having me yet again yeah thank you so we're here once again to uh discuss aliens meditation and global politics and whatever else we feel like. How are how are you doing? I'm doing great. I, you know, I've been just getting deeper into this. Uh, um, you know, trying to sort through the the real from the not real, and trying to decide if anything is real, and and um, and just learning. And it's starting to to really make sense to me. It's it's filling in the details and the picture. It's making a big picture and. And I get it, and, and I'm uh, I'm really wanting to flesh some of this out with you uh, as we go. So that's where my head's at. Oh, fantastic! Yeah, so you're you're sort of building up a uh, a narrative of what you think is basically behind the scenes going on. Yeah, well, I, you know, and we all have our narratives, but you know, I think I think it's it's getting clear, and uh, it, it seems to seems to go way back. Well, uh, you know, alien history goes back, I think, millions of years. Who knows? But um, yeah, the whole since the whole disclosure thing and the and the technology that has been accessed since World War II that that I'm hearing about. So, uh, how how does that all fit together with this um, majestic twelve? Um, you know more about that than I do. So, so l l let me find out where you want to take us today. Yeah. Well, I was thinking. Uh... First, a little update on what's happening in the U.S. Congress, because that seems to be, again, a key point in the alien disclosure phenomenon that we are uh, seem to be experiencing in this, this year. Um, the latest there is that there's a, there's a handful of representatives, uh, Tim Burchett, Congresswoman Luna, um, and a few others that are very enthusiastic about they seem to be very enthusiastic about trying to get to the truth of this um they seem convinced there's some some sort of thing going on with the private military industrial complex and possibly literally hiding ufo crafts in contact with aliens and they've been waiting since the uh since the testimony of uh, david grush ryan graves and commander fravor uh, a, few, a couple months ago, and they've, they've been waiting to get into what's called a SCIF, a secure facility where they can be told the uh, the really classified details of if there's a investigation going on by the Inspector General of the of Congress uh, related to this, which David Grush says there is. There says there's an investigation going on into the criminal activities that have been involved in hiding aliens, UFOs, and possibly crimes of various sorts, you know, fraud, possibly murders, who knows, possibly assassinations. And um, they've been, they just announced on Twitter like two days ago that they've gotten permission to go into a skiff to get this info. They've been held back for some reason. And so soon we should have some, some uh, Congress people that know a lot more. And, uh, it seems that's kind of the way a lot of information will get out there because congressmen and women do not keep secrets. 
you know, and they, they leave office also. So it's like it. Uh, so we're, we're kind of waiting to see what happens when they're when they go into these rooms and they find out what happens. I have a feeling they're going to be told about Majestic 12 in detail. It, it seems there's enough people hinting that Majestic 12, which is this this uh, theory of an organization that apparently was created back after Roswell to be the group that uh, in the government that hid and worked on alien technology and possibly had a you know managed a treaty or something with aliens in some way. Um, this majestic twelve story has a, a long history. It, it was the, the the Air Force and others claimed to have debunked it back in the sixties or eighties. But it seems that debunking might have been a a complete uh, hack job. And uh, yeah, it's a it's a really, really interesting sort of story to go down. Um, and if you just go to Wikipedia and look at Majestic 12, you can find the basic details of what these documents said about this organization. It even lists, I think, like 12 people that were on Majestic 12, real people that oh, we know. Wow. Do I'm they... look at that. Yes. Yeah. And uh, one of them that I find fascinating is this guy, Forrestal, who uh, I think he was one of the first secretaries of defense. Uh, and he was listed in the document as being on Majestic 12. And he came to a very disturbing end. He, They said he, when it had mental illness at the end of his life, they sent him into these military hospitals. They gave him shock treatment and all sorts of things. And then eventually he uh, fell out the window and died. Oh, God. And wow. so there's a lot of theories that this guy Forrestal was actually trying to disclose what was going on and they maybe they killed him or maybe they or maybe he actually developed mental issues because the pressure of knowing a secret like this and a secret that most people think is insane anyways that can put a lot of pressure on your brain so maybe he actually did have a mental breakdown yeah being immersed in this situation yeah i i was listening to this uh investigative journalist um George Knapp. Are you familiar with him? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So he was the one that I was listening to learn, you know, talking a little bit about this MJ 12. He said, and I don't know when it was probably back in the in the 80s or something where half of them were wanting to uh, release this information that, you know, kind of go go back to being legal again. And the other half did not. So I, I wonder if that murder, if it what what seems to be like a murder, was was part of that argument. Um, you know, because if some of them wanted to to be ex more transparent and the, the other half didn't, that could cause a lot of infighting. I would imagine. Uh, I think, yeah, to say the least. Yeah. So George, Knapp, what um was that a recent uh thing by George Knapp because I, I oh, watch gosh. his you know I go through these videos so fast uh let me see if I can pull up my history because <laughs> there talking. was <laughs> there was just a a special on News Nation about George Knapp and because he's been covering this since Bob Lazar and right. um he yeah. has a, a podcast uh called Weaponized with Jeremy Corbell They're, they've both been super in the lead on this disclosure hmm issue and so but i hadn't actually heard george knapp uh get into majestic 12 it's kind of it's kind of interesting it, it seems like him and jeremy corbell they they seem to know a lot but they seem to be sort of like letting info out on their podcast on some sort of like schedule almost you know they interesting they just they did an episode uh like a few weeks ago on bill cooper who was a big ufo disclosure guy in i believe the 80s who also met an untimely end he was killed by irs agents which is a weird way to die yeah and um yeah and he but he was he was super into majestic 12 he talked about it all the time if you if you watch videos on youtube from bill cooper oh my he's he i mean he is more complicated than the x files in the, oh, wow. the bill conspiracy cooper, that right? yeah bill cooper okay yeah I'm gonna, right i'm gonna check him out so, yeah oh, i didn't cut you off sorry oh no um, and I mean, another piece that really the, the thing that opened my eyes to Majestic 12 is that Lou Elizondo, who was, you know, who, who has been an, 
another big wig um, whistleblower uh, from the Pentagon, uh, controversial figure to some, but he's sort of like the he was sort of sort of like David Grush before David Grush. And and his lawyer is named uh, Daniel Sheehan, who is a famous uh, famous in some circles and a super expert on the JFK assassination, wow. and probably other uh, things like the RFK assassination. But he he I've found videos of him talking in great detail over the years about the suspected CIA conspiracy to kill JFK. He never in these videos talked about ufos or aliens being related to it but he went on like uh, a news channel right around the time david grush testified and he mentioned majestic 12 when they really pressed him what it, who is the, who are the people behind this all these years who are the people keeping the secrets and he said it's majestic 12 and he just dropped that name and it made me like okay i'm gonna research this because that's a that's a can of worms um oh that, just that word <laughs> for sure and uh interesting enough there's a there's a big old um a very woo woo uh alien ufo conference in las vegas uh next month and there's uh tons of interesting people there that are like elizabeth april who claims to be able to telepathically communicate with aliens and probably several others but i find her sort of interesting and compelling but Daniel Sheehan's going to be there. Apparently, the do you want to give the information of that conference so the so the listeners might be able to check it out? Yeah, it's uh, I think it's disclosurefest.com or dot org. Disclosurefest.org, and then it's Stairway to the Stars, November tenth, eleventh, and twelfth. It has this three day schedule filled with uh, meditations and different talks about aliens and uh you know their relation to human history it's it's all over the place it's got that all sorts neat. of is greer gonna be there I no i don't know i don't see greer on there okay. i see let's see like david childress nick pope um yeah elizabeth april uh i mean I, i'm just trying to see uh, randall carlson richard uh, dolan um and then several it looks like people from indigenous tribes are going to be there doing talks um it's got it's got a very big lineup oh james fox a big he's a big uh, movie director he did uh so, a couple of the really big amazing ufo movies and he's done uh, james fox i should know what he does he, i think he did the abyss or something um mm -hmm. james so so i don't want to cut you off if you're yeah. on a train of thought but I, I would like to know more about what you know about the majestic 12. Well, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if any of it's true, but it seems to fit. Uh, it seems to me that uh, Roswell was maybe around Roswell seemed to be the time that the U.S. government was exposed to aliens and UFOs. And they it, they seem to have created Majestic 12 as the super secret group or to to hide this. But not with the intention that it became a group to necessarily control the world, but I think it might have evolved into that. Now, do you think there are any alien influences in that group, like, you know, part of it or half reptilian or 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 any kind of an alien influence in that group? Well, what what seems to fit for me, there seems to be a ton of evidence that there are reptilian aliens that have been sharing earth with humans since ancient times that yeah. maybe live in the oceans or live in the earth or in antarctica and and then it seems to also be alien you know extraterrestrials or super powerful aliens that aren't from earth that don't co cohabitate necessarily here but can visit here maybe they live on other planets in our solar system maybe in the moon maybe they just travel back and forth from other stars here it's it seems so that seems to be for me that's sort of the basic framework i see it looks like there's some aliens here with us that consider themselves earthlings they consider earth their home and they consider they they it seems to me that the reptilians they consider earth their home and they have as much right to be here and do whatever they want here as humans do um but it seems those super powerful aliens, 
they, my suspicion, and this makes logical sense, they, they must have some sort of like ethics or rules about not super interfering with human affairs. It, yeah, I, I it, agree. Yeah, I think and, so. And, and it seems also that they, and, and this is, I mean, I get some of this from people like Elizabeth April, who claims to talk to these super powerful aliens. And she says there are strict laws that apply to the reptilian aliens too, that they can't directly um, do things. They can only use persuasion and, uh, you know, just, yeah, the art of persuasion and verbal things to get humans to do things. And they, the story seems to be that over the years, the these rep, some of these reptilian aliens who are not super enlightened or loving of humanity may have been working with world leaders and dictators and groups to to further their interests which probably is just about resources and labor and things like that they they have and they may have been you know even like influencing humans to do horrible things and maybe wars some of these a lot of wars through human history may have been proxy wars that were really in the interest of some of these, uh, possibly these, again, I guess the reptilian aliens. And I, I just say the reptilians because I, I, I mean, it's possible it's the, I don't know, the the other aliens. I, I suppose they might be, I, I just like to believe that the, the really powerful aliens or intelligence in this universe wouldn't be so petty that they would like manipulate human wars and oh i i totally agree yeah <laughs> thank you for saying it i agree <laughs> yeah yeah i was also watching a thing today about um you know somebody in in these disclosure i can't remember which video it was they were talking about how they're working with frequencies and, and wavelengths and and how this can this whole science of frequencies and and wavelengths um can be used uh to when they can st stimulate a certain pattern that resonates within our system um it can be it can have a, a manipulative effect on us and so if they put out a, an energy that is a lower vibration it can actually uh stimulate a, a kind of a sense of fear or floating anxiety or or, or even craving something's missing, you know, got to have something, don't know what. These, these frequencies can be uh, stimulated in our bodies actually through flat screen um, uh, EMF, uh, you know, waves. Uh, and that's concerning because if you're thinking the, you know, that there's a, a way of persuasion, like you said, this is an easy way to do it through these frequencies yeah so, yeah that that's um i mean we need to be aware of that you know if we're just sitting around watching movies or browsing the internet and suddenly we're just feeling overwhelmed with with some kind of emotion which is basically what all hollywood is about is try to to tap into your emotional body um but if we can gain a sort of some kind of intentional uh way of seeing it first of all recognizing that we we are being manipulated and being able to use mental powers to redirect our attention now this is what uh hindus did this is this is a whole science unto itself i had a friend who um in california who uh, was very into uh, just watching cultivating what we call the witness he could go to a dentist and have a tooth worked on, you know, a filling and drilling without any uh, pain medication, just because he was watching it, he could observe it and just watch it without going into the big reaction mode. Now, this is also what the whole current, you know, ice dipping thing is, mm -hmm. how to override this part of our nervous system that gets um, reactive. Uh, and, and so that's the first thing we need to do is is just see that this could be happening behind the scenes is that our emotional bodies are being manipulated um yeah. and in, you know it, it ties right into everything in buddhism because because the whole reason that we manifest uh and, and stay in these physical forms is because of our cravings we want this we want that and that's why we keep getting reborn according to buddhism and hinduism and all that so if we continuously resonate 
these uh, and activate these these parts of our emotional body, these chakras that are fear and anxiety oriented, we're we're never going to get out of this <laughs> this feeling of of um, of um, being a being a uh, a victim. We have to, that's the first thing that has to go. We have to realize that we are a capable of, of higher consciousness. Um, you know, there, there is that part of our brain that is a reptilian, mammalian, whatever you want to call it, that is specifically there for our survival, can uh, trigger quickly into fight, flight, freeze, and all that. And what we need to do is recognize that, that trigger and and be able to intentionally redirect into a more uh, uh, some some more creative uh, um, part of our nervous system where we can access more creative uh, solutions. Mm. So that's that's where I want to go a little bit with with these these technologies that are being developed is just to acknowledge how much they are influencing us every day. Yeah. Yeah, well, it uh, brought to mind several different threads um, for me. I mean, one, I didn't. I guess I didn't quite finish my uh, my story. I just started talking about reptilian aliens and other aliens. But it, it the way it connects to Majestic Twelve, and and I want to connect this to because I want to come back to sort of mental health and this whole UFO alien disclosure moment. It it seems the story is that possibly Eisenhower made some sort of treaty with non-human intelligence. And that's part of been what's hidden here. I've heard that. Yes. Uh -huh. yeah. Interesting. And, well, and so that, I mean, that creates two things. One, it means we might be living on a planet where there is a, at least one non-human civilization that is not talking openly to us. It's talking in secret to some secret creep keeper group of humans which is a that's a like a fundamental problem with the idea of democracy and, and our governments having any legitimacy and and it calls into question the ethics of the aliens that they would not talk to all humans they would instead talk to these secret keepers i mean how are they choosing what humans to be the ones that they consider representatives of humanity so so there, to me there's there's a political sort of uh question there that i think i personally i even think it's worth bringing that up to the aliens like we should as humanity we should be like the population should be saying to them speak to us it's kind of what stephen greer is doing he's like we should be able to open our own diplomatic relations with the aliens yeah. and they should talk to us you know th this is interesting because what what i kind of feel intuitively about this majestic 12 you know some half of them wanted to uh you know, expose it and be more transparent. The other half did not. But my, you could call it intuitive sense was that they came to an agreement that they would expose it if they felt that humanity was ready for it. And I think we're kind of being analyzed in this way. Are we ready for it? And I, and I'm getting the sense I've already heard from a couple of channels here on YouTube. I don't know, I should take notes. But they're kind of this feeling that we're not ready for it. It would blow us away. It would we just couldn't handle it. And uh, and so if that's the case, that that's that leaves a lot of questions. OK, well, if we're deemed if we are deemed um, not qualified, what does that mean? Hmm. So and what does what does it mean to be qualified? I think what it means is they're trying to bring into our consciousness because the, the intuitive uh, messages that are coming through are, are pretty, pretty clear. And it is a higher consciousness. And they're basically saying, you know, we can, um, if we can raise our energy without being so reactive, because we continuously get uh, reactive and, and just trip back into our animal uh, mammalian reactive fight, flight and, and freeze that we have to have more our whole nervous system has to be uh somewhat modified so that we don't just trigger so easily that that we have more access to creative solutions um before you know and this i don't think means getting rid of 
the fight, flight, and freeze. I mean, that's all part of being in a body and, you know, protecting it. And, uh, but, but I think we're, we're kind of being too reactive right now. It's just, we're, we're not qualifying for the path to this higher consciousness that they're interested in, in uh, offering to us. And no, no, I don't think anybody's being forced anywhere here. I think we're being analyzed by our clicks and views and, and just our, our reading of energy that we're emoting, each of us individually. Um, we're kind of being studied, I, I would say. And if we're qualified as a species that is capable of reaching a higher consciousness, um, at least to the heart level, <laughs> you know, uh, I, I think they're, that's what they're doing. And right now we, we're not looking so good. That's what I'm picking up. Yeah. Yeah. It, it seems like there's, there's two different layers to what's going on. There's what these uh, very powerful, hopefully somewhat enlightened uh, aliens are doing, which I agree. I, I get the sense they are. I, I think they may, it may be as simple as they're waiting for us to achieve peace on earth. They're just like humans. You've got to, you've got to achieve peace. And I mean, I, I could almost see them saying that, that that in in a general sense, we're waiting for you to get enlightened enough and to solve enough of your own problems before we really reveal ourselves. There's that something, or and maybe they're helping, and maybe they're telepathically communicating. Maybe they're doing gentle things that they believe are, um, not overly interfering, not violating their their rule of non, you know, non-interference, which seems to be some sort of ethic they're following. Yeah. Yeah. This, this sense of collaboration is, is I think, you know, are we really able to collaborate, you know, or, or mm. you know, who they're wanting to know who they're dealing with. Are they dealing with intelligent people? Or are they dealing with, you know, gun toting, you know, army shooting gamers, you know, what, what is going on? They're trying to figure this out. Uh, so, because we can't evolve, I think we are at a p place where we have an opportunity to take a quantum leap in in our conscious evolution. And that doesn't mean, you know, getting beamed off Earth and off into space. It, it means taking a leap in our actual human evolution, because you know we have to acknowledge that collaboration is the only th way of of evolution. Look at look at look at uh, amoebas right when they first started coming alive on this planet it, it required getting together with other unicellular uh, entities in order to distribute um, jobs you know like you be a little bit of a nervous system and i'll be a part of a you know i'll intake some oxygen and we'll work together and and so that's evolution and so we've come all the way to this point now where we've got all these organs and, and different kinds of cells and we're all working together. This is collaboration. And, uh, you know, I don't want to get too abstract, but nothing really evolves if it's constantly shooting itself in the foot and, and beating up each other. And, um, and this kind of, of, of consciousness is available, I think, to us right now to really get that bigger picture because we're never going to be qualified to join any kind of a you know call it a galactic federation or whatever any any level of higher um higher business uh if if we're just constantly being reactive um yeah so i think that's that's what they're looking at uh i, I kind of want to see it as we've all we've been a a slave race and and so with this slavery it's kind of think of us as like having cows right so we have cows and we use them for milk and so possibly they have been using us for all kinds of things. I'm sure they have. But you know what happens when a cow shows too much, uh, too much humanity. So, you know, we can overlay that consciousness on top of a cow. If a cow starts becoming sentient and, you know, trying to communicate, you, you know, you have to reevaluate if you're treating this cow properly. Uh, you know, and, and at what point do you let them go? Uh, you're not, you're too much like a, you know, a sentient living partner here on earth. I can't just be using you. Um, yeah. I think we're going through that kind of evaluation. 
Yeah, it's it's kind of analogous. I heard someone um, talking about AI in a similar way, saying uh, it's great we're we're creating AI, artificial intelligence, but if we are going to create a sentient AI, we need to be careful about that. This person was saying um, that don't create sentient AI to be your labor force. Once it becomes sentient, you have to think of it differently, and you have to th start you know, thinking of it as having rights. And, and it may be that humans, you know, as we evolved over the years, we sort of crossed from this, uh, just sort of like simpleton labor force that maybe was helping some non-human civilizations in some way to now we're intelligent enough and sentient enough that it's like, they have to do what you're saying. They have to be like, okay, this is a different type of being. They have free will. They have some rights. They have some rights of uh that they have to somehow acknowledge or integrate and and i think this is where it starts to overlap yeah because this is where i think there's two layers i think there's the non-human intelligence that would love to in welcome humanity into the galactic community and then there's the ones that might be sharing earth with us and have bitter feelings towards humanity in some ways I've heard they even feel like we're trespassing on Earth, like Earth is theirs. They were here first. And so there there might be some complex relationship we have, not only with other just humans in other countries, but with an, a fully, you know, Earth-based non-human intelligence that uh, is not perhaps completely enlightened. And uh, that, that, that totally I, resonates. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and then, you know, it's sort of the other layer of that is the human secret keepers, the ones in Majestic 12 and the government that are that have been keeping this secret. And and it does seem, though, there is some sort of slow disclosure that is going on. It, it seems like s some portion of these secret keepers are intentionally chipping away and slowly letting this information out, even the way they had David Grush do a hearing. And then they waited a month and a half before they're going to let the representatives go into a skiff to hear what he said. And they just had a, a couple people on, you know, insiders on the weaponized podcast by Jeremy Corbell and George Knapp that said the U.S. has an alien craft and we've been inside it. It's like they're slowly letting this info out. And, and if I can just share one of my theories about that is I think they've been waiting all this time uh be to to try to advance probably i mean if the u.s government has been like okay we're going to reveal this they wouldn't want to reveal this until they felt like they were in a strategic position to do well with it and if say i think they reversed enough alien technology that they now feel they have probably some very secret high-tech weapons or things or other technology that would when this fully comes out they'll be able to say to the i don't know the american people or the people of earth yes we've been hiding this but look we've developed this crazy thing this crazy device that will help protect us from uh i don't know the reptilians maybe that are uh, the ones that are um might want to hurt us or or maybe they're not yeah. going to tell us they have this weapon but they do have it they have devices that they feel will help protect us strategically when it's revealed to Earth that there's non-human intelligence with crafts that can move beyond anything we can do. That's that's a destabilizing thing to say. Yeah, well, you know, I just feel like if if they're treating if the reptilians or whoever's this majestic twelve, you know, if they view humanity as a uh, a resource, you know, for for our our labor, for our uh, you know what do they call that um, conspiracy drug loose or something um if they're just milking us uh basically you know metaphorically milking us and that's what they think our whole purpose is uh it's really up to us to prove them otherwise that we're not um that we are more conscious and that and it's not going to help to get out the big guns and go to war because i mean we're dealing with a very advanced species and i think we all all we need to do is prove that we are much more worthy in consciousness and, and sentience than, than they think we are. You know, we're not just 
oh what what is the uh, new word i'm learning um uh, npc right <laughs> <laughs> non-player characters right but some of us are actually awake and yeah. and the, i think we're just kind of going through this thing in uh could be astrological or just some something cyclical where we are coming into an opportunity of energy where we we have an opportunity to to wake up to this yeah. and uh and, and you know i just saw that great movie uh real guy right it, he suddenly just wakes up he was a non-player character <laughs> suddenly he Wait, just, was it a uh, free guy that, uh, was it free what did i say yeah free guy. Real guy free guy yeah real guy whatever it was um <laughs> and he he just you know his part in the game he was programmed to just go in and order a coffee with two sugars and and suddenly he goes in and says i want a cappuccino i mean he's just a different consciousness he's he's like what do i really want and he becomes awake and aware it's a great metaphor for what uh what i think we're, we're looking at is some of these non-player characters are uh, having access to waking up and whether or not they take that opportunity is, is I think what they're looking at here. Can they wake yeah. up or yeah. not? I think that's what we're looking at. Yeah. Well, it, it goes to, uh, see, that's a great, that's a great movie to bring up. Cause I, I feel like we are in the moment in that movie where we're like the free guy and we see there is a secret beneath the surface and we're even by doing this podcast, we're like him standing in that park trying to explain to the crowd, hey, everybody, there's something really funky going on here. <laughs> yeah. But but that's a that's a difficult mental place to be because you're talking about something that sounds crazy. And for the last hundred years, that is exactly what they would tell you if you claim to think aliens are real. They would say you're crazy and you might be institutionalized or fired. And because we're in this limbo right now where the government is, it's sort of, I mean, I actually feel really lucky that I got into aliens in the middle, you know, of, uh, you know, this time period where there is so much evidence to put me at some level of mental ease. If I had been like, if it had been 15 years ago and I was like Bill Cooper, I would have been so frustrated and like, this is crazy. The government is so hiding this and nobody yeah. is telling the truth. And Right. Yeah. Yeah. I love that it's it's coming out a little bit at a time because I, I think it's I think they're right. We couldn't handle it if it was just dumped all of it all at once on on the general public. Mm -hmm. I, I think what they're doing is a strategic release of information. They gauge our response. They see who's kind of waking up to it. And, and then, you know, are they freaking out and, you know, going for the guns or are they going to actually try to. Uh, gain more information and, and hope for peace or whatever. I mean, I think we're mm -hmm. kind of going through that stage now. It's um, it's yeah. amazing. It's, it's just what I see, this this slow release of information. And I so appreciate that you're on top of the congressional hearings and the release of, of all this disclosure. And there's a lot there. There's a, just so much to pick apart. And uh, yeah. and I, and I want to encourage people this is a real opportunity for all of us to really watch the fear um you know fear is that first chakra it's right down there like oh my god we're gonna be all just blown to bits and and we have no control well you know we have no control anyway we never have it's just all about the stories in our head and and we have this opportunity to to gain more creativity more more access to bigger more unbelievably um wonderful solutions for our species if we can open up and listen for that yeah. guidance great well with with that i would like to thank you for you know just helping me sort of navigate this crazy changing world and invite our listeners to uh um well one i'd like to invite them if they're also very curious in exploring this issue uh hive1.net is a site I've developed where I document every thought thread I have as I uncover um, and research this issue and people are welcome to come there and explore uh, the topics there and submit their own ideas and uh, participate. And uh, what do you think about we do our closing uh, meditation? Okay, um, let me put in a little plug for for my business. I'm a I'm a, a life coach, been a life coach for over 20 years, and I uh, 
this is the kind of stuff, I mean, I just really get fired up uh, working with people trying to work through their anxieties and fears around these uh, disclosure things. But if you go to my website, um, creationcoach.com, there's a lot more that uh, that I can coach with. And um, hope I hope to hear from anybody who's interested in, in all of this. So one of the main most important things in my book is staying balanced, staying centered, staying clear, staying away from energies that uh, that pull us pull us off balance. And to do that, we have to notice what's going on. And that's where meditation comes in. So let's do a little, um, we'll do a 15 minute meditation. Is that good? Sounds great. Okay. So let's just get comfortable. I'll ring the bell. And just bring all of your attention to the bell. So we need to remember everything in our mind that's buzzing around. These are just energies that are passing through. It's really up to us to decide what we want to grab onto or let go of. And so this exercise is a practice in letting go. As our minds get fired up with all of these things that might be stimulating fear and anxiety and uncertainty, to be able to have the mental strength and ability and training to recognize it for what it is, feel where it is in our body, and come back to that place in our body where it's manifesting. Don't go into the story. And this is just an exercise of letting go of the stories that grab onto us or try to try to grab us. And by letting go, this gives us more choice in how we want to respond to situations. So with that, as your mind is getting carried away, which it will over and over again, the practice is to first notice it. Oh, I've been carried away by this particular train of thought. Just first notice it. And, and almost with a sense of curiosity, where is that manifesting in my body? Because every thought we have is actually having a physical counterpart manifestation. So bring more awareness into the body. Where are we being activated? And if it all seems too nebulous, we can always just come right back to our breath. Breathing in, breathing out. So right now, feel yourself wherever you are. Feel the weight of your body being supported by the planet, the beautiful Mother Gaia. Just feel how she's supporting you. Feel the, the weight of your bottom on the cushion or your feet on the floor, hands on the lap. Feel the weight of your head on your shoulders. We're being supported. And bring your awareness to your breath, wherever you feel it most clearly. It might be at the nose or the back of the throat or chest or abdomen. Just find that place where you can just settle in with your breath for a few minutes. Follow it in. Watch it turn, follow it out, watch it turn. We do that for just a minute.
all those voices in your head slowly go to the back room. It's almost like leaving the noisy kitchen to go sit alone in the living room. The voices are still there, but you don't have to pay attention. Just bring your awareness to the breath. When your mind is quiet and blank like a like a slate board, just put out sort of just an invitation that if any conscious beings from a higher, wiser realm wants to convey a message, they're welcome to. Not that you're anticipating or demanding. It's just an open door for the time being. Our only job is to breathe in and breathe out. Feel the energy in the body. Where is your energy? Is there any place burning? Is there any place tense? If you're familiar with the energies of the chakra, how would you define which chakra you're in right now? I would like to encourage everyone to activate their heart chakra if they can. We're all in this together. What an amazing story. What a great game we came up with. And here we are. Waking up. Remember every time your mind wanders, the whole name of the game is to be aware of it. And then make the conscious choice to let it go and come back to the breath. This is our empty slate. This is our invitation to move into a higher consciousness. What is our common ground? Our common ground is our humanity. What is our humanity? Our humanity is our feelings and our senses. When we wash our hands, we all feel the water the same way. We all hear the water the same way. We all breathe the same way. This is us and this is our story. Let's make it a beautiful one. It starts with peace. Breathing in, breathing out.
May we open our hearts to the higher consciousness and wisdom that's being offered to us. May we prove ourselves to be sentient and qualified to be respected. And you can bring your awareness to any sounds that are passing through. No analysis is necessary. We're just tuning into what is. Just check in with all your little muscle groups. What about your face? Is it tight? Is it tense around the eyes? Shoulders? Just paying attention can relax the body. Did you get carried away again? Oh, just notice it. Let it go, come back. Tune in with any of your senses. What do you smell? You can open your eyes and see the colors and shapes and shadows and depth without naming everything. This is our common ground, simple being. And it's up to us to decide what we want to make of it. And I would invite you to tune into your body many times a day. We call them M&Ms, mindful moments. Just to be present. Check in with your energy. Where is it? We are fully capable of being a member of any galactic federation. We just have to live up to that challenge. It's a higher consciousness. The invitation comes through the heart. And we access that through our senses. Breathing in. Breathing out.
Thanks, Matt. Thank you, Dora, once again. Until next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.